So, uh, my name is Jimmy Song. I'm one of the core developers of Promo Wallet, which is a color points project. Um, it's uh, led by a guy named Alex Mizrahi. He's based in the Ukraine. I'm based in Austin, Texas, in America. So, you can imagine that there's a lot of sort of collaboration over the internet and stuff. And he's actually paid me in Bitcoin before. So, it's kind of a cool, like, new economy thing that we're doing. Anyway, I'm, I'm here to talk to you about color coins and what, what it is and you know how it works and you know some of the misconceptions uh, around it. So let me let me start with what it is not. Color coins are not an altcoin. Not like Litecoin, Dogecoin, you know, Namecoin, you know, there's like an X11 coin and dark coin. There, there's literally almost 500 altcoins out there. Color coins is not one of them. Um, unlike some of the competitors, there is not a, its own currency of any kind, um, and you know that's that's an important thing to realize. What it is? Color coins is a way to transfer arbitrary assets using the Bitcoin blockchain, and the way it does that is by sort of coloring the coins. Um, that's that's where the whole term comes from. It's assigning to a particular Bitcoin or Satoshi or whatever is in the blockchain, uh, meaning besides the actual Bitcoin there. So you can say this Satoshi is equivalent to one ounce of gold or one ounce of silver or one share of stock in this company or you know a share of this bond or whatever. The idea is that you can track things through the blockchain and be able to keep track of the ownership of said asset. Um, so how does it get created? How do you create these color coins and how do you, you know, trans transfer them and so on? Well, uh, there's this process called issuing color coins and that requires somebody that is willing to put assets on the blockchain. So say like a gold issuer that's, uh, that's saying, okay, I'm going to put a thousand ounces of gold on the blockchain and these are the color coins that will represent gold ounces. Um, they would issue color coins using Chroma Wallet uh, or some other wallet that lets you do that. Uh, there are sort of two philosophies as far as how they're issued and how they're tracked. I'll get into that a little bit later. But suffice it to say that Coin Prism, which may be uh, another project that you've heard of, uses one, and Chroma Wallet uses another. All right. So how to get? How do you sort of transfer, you know, color coins from one person to another? This is uh, we we have to use something called the color kernel, which are rules that specifically state these inputs go to these outputs, and you know, here's the color value transfer from one to the other. And they have to be deterministic, they have to be very specific, and they can never uh, create new color coins, they can only destroy. Um, and there's a lot of different ones like that, uh, called order-based coloring, um, padded order-based coloring, and some other ones. Anyway, so the interesting thing is, what can you do with this? Well, you could, as a company, you could issue stock on the Bitcoin blockchain. Say, all right, I am going to go public with my company, and uh, everyone who owns a share, uh, you know, I'm going to issue 10,000 shares in my company, and everyone that owns exactly one share uh, has the equivalent of 0.01% of my company. And you can do that, sell it on the open market. Um, you can trade these stocks for bitcoins, for example, and let the market sort of decide how much they're worth. Um, you, could, you could do bonds in the same way, and the nice thing about bonds is uh, you could pay interest to the owners by just following, uh, as an issuer, you can pay interest to the owners of the bonds automatically in Bitcoin without knowing who they are. And that's, that's a very powerful feature, because as you can imagine, you can be, you know, you can anonymously own stock or bonds and get the dividends or interest Without, without worrying about you know, anybody knowing who you are. Um, you could do something called smart property, and this, this, is, uh, this is a more interesting concept. It's basically the idea that you can, uh, you can have some item that's represented on the blockchain, and you can transfer ownership. So if you think about it, 
the government uh, of almost any, any country has a registry of deeds. Right? This is how you figure out who owns that house. And you have to register with the government and say, OK, um, I am selling this house to this other person. And uh, I'm paying this amount of money. And you know, they, they have to do all this processing. They, it usually costs a lot of money, at least in the United States. The a large part of the closing costs of selling a house go to the government in the, in the form of, here, please register my house as being owned by me. If you, you could do that on the blockchain with smart property. You can say, all right, this coin represents my house. And when I, when I hand it over, I'm going to get some money for it or some goods or services or whatever. And now this house belongs to you. And, that, and you can prove it because you have the private key to which the color coin belongs. And at that point, you can sign whatever documents with it and say, okay, it's clear it's that I own this house because it's on the blockchain. And if I sell it again, then people will know that I no longer own it. Um, you can use it for reward points, for example. Um, everybody knows about airline miles, for example, right? And you can, if you're a small business and you want to issue your own color coins that represent, you know, buy 10, you know, eat here 10 times and get one free. You can, you can do that on the blockchain. You can issue color coins and give them color coins every time and they can redeem 10 of them for a meal at your, uh, at your small business. It's not only for big businesses. And this is all kept track of. The entire accounting system is all on the Bitcoin blockchain. You can also do something like tickets. So you, you're hosting an event, um, you know, like a concert or something. You can have cryptographically secure tickets where people have to, people give you a color coin back in order to enter the concert venue. And this could be a great thing for obvious reasons because, you know, you can transfer that to another person and, you know, last minute I can't go, here, here, here. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna text you or I'm gonna send it to you through the blockchain um, and now you can get in with the same color coin. Um, there are many other cases, uh, uses that uh, that are possible with color coin that uh, that I haven't mentioned, but um, but I, I'm sure you can let your imagination run wild. There's a lot of different ways in which this can work. So just want to go over a few competing slash compatible technologies. A lot of these technologies are what uh, the community calls Bitcoin 2.0, uh, Mastercoin, BitShares, Next, Gray Markets, Ethereum, Counterparty, Open Transactions. Uh, not surprisingly, Open Transactions is is what Monetas is working with, uh, is developing, and uh, Color Coins has um, some very interesting integration points with that. So, uh, the two main projects right now that are Color Coins related are Coin Prism and uh, Chroma Wallet. Chroma Wallet is what I've been involved with. Um, we just released 0.0.7 Alpha. Um, today. Uh, Coin Prism's been out for a little while. Uh, the main difference being Coin Prism you can only issue on the website that they built and it's all in JavaScript and you have to go to their website. It's kind of centralized. Um, Chroma Wallet is a wallet that you download and you, you can take any Bitcoins and issue color coins. Um, right now it's only recommended that you, do, you use it on testnet but you know, otherwise it's, it's, you know, it's still in development. So anyway, uh, any questions? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, uh, so probably actually I didn't get into the beginning, so I was thinking. <laughs> sure. But uh, my question is, uh, I've been reading a little bit about all these trades, Ethereum, mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. transactions, core points. Mm -hmm. so. And uh, I have a question. Uh, they, I have read some articles that they said actually there is not really a point actually created another let's say coin, or let's mm -hmm. say Bitcoin protocol or protocol, mm -hmm. but actually trying to integrate with the protocol itself, like side chains. Mm -hmm. Surely you heard about it. Yeah. So what about that? I just would like to know. Okay, so the way side chains are supposed to work is yeah. that you're, you're taking, you're creating a new op code into the Bitcoin um, core uh, code, and you're transferring that Bitcoin value to another, you know, blockchain. blockchain. And then they have an opcode that lets you transfer it back. Okay. And so the, that, the Bitcoin value is sort of locked at that point. And then um, that is a long, long time. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it, it needs a lot of approval from a lot of Bitcoin core developers. It needs to go through a very long process. Okay. Um, and, the, and they haven't figured out a lot of um, 
you know, the proof of stake things that need to happen on the side chain in order for it to work properly. Because okay. um, you can't create any more uh, coins on the side chain because that would mean that you're inflating Bitcoin itself. Yeah. So it, it, had, it they have to be very careful with that and they have to use some different mechanisms which they haven't entirely worked out. So, so okay. Cool. Yeah. But um, it's, it's very, you know, it, it's sort of trying to stab at a similar problem, but which is that you know people don't want to just trade Bitcoin; they want to trade lots of other stuff um, using the same technology. So, so for your point of view, it would be like probably going to be possible, but later on, not now. Yeah, um, I, I honestly don't know okay. when. It, if I, I know Adam Back's pretty pretty into it, um, yeah, exactly. and, and some other people that uh, you know they're going around and raising money, and yeah. they're obviously trying to get press, but. Yeah, it's my opinion on it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah? Is it possible to verify the ownership of a colored coin without having to download the whole blockchain? <laughs> yes, yes. So um, the nice thing is that when you have like a Genesis transaction, that's sort of when you issue the color coins, there's a very particular point in time when that happens. And you only need, instead of the entire blockchain graph, Right, of every transaction that's ever been. You only need the subgraph that relates strictly from that point on and, and sort of spiders out from there. And you, you only need that subgraph, which should no, be nowhere near as big as the entire blockchain. And, um, and there are SPV client, there, SPV support, which I coded actually, um, just got put into Chrome Wallet 0.0.7, so, which was released. So. Feel free to download it, it works. Yeah. Imagine I receive different types of color coin mm -hmm. from a single wallet. Mm -hmm. So I receive bonds, stocks, and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. How do I recognize those? In the sense, and then mm -hmm. when I send I send bitcoins, mm -hmm. which are colored, but uh -huh. how do I differentiate? Sure, I send sure. Stocks? Excellent question. Um, so the key to any color coin is that you need the definition. And the definition has it in it the transaction where it, it, it started at. That's called the Genesis transaction. And that's how you can differentiate between coins, is you, you have to import the color definition first before you can, you can receive or send that coin. And at, at least the Chroma wallet, the way it works is that uh, it keeps track for you which colors you already have. And you know, when you transfer some, um, you know, you're, you're sending that value. Uh, now you could hack into it and <laughs> take the underlying Bitcoin value and send it, and then you would, those color coins would just disappear. They, that would be actually a safe way to destroy them. Um, but you know that's uh, the the client lets you know, and that's that's one of the advantages. So it, it wouldn't work with a Bitcoin QT? Or no, no, absolutely not. And um, you have to get a client that's color aware. Um, so let's assume I have some silver color coins and mm -hmm. some gold um, mm -hmm. denoted ones. I want to trade them. Mm -hmm. How would I do that? Right, that's a great question. You could do it directly on the blockchain. There, there is um, a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, trading system built into Chroma Wallet, uh, which it, which is a little buggy. I, I, I'm going to be honest, and you know, it's it's not something that people have done before, um, largely because no one's going to trade just Bitcoin for Bitcoin, right? That's stupid. But uh, once you have like color coin for you know some big other color coin or color coin for Bitcoin, um, it becomes interesting. And interestingly enough, that stuff is all possible within the current protocol. It's just um, you know you can sign a transaction and they have to sign it back, and then you can put it into the blockchain. Problem with that is that it tends to be slow. Uh, blockchain, as we all, as many of you, I imagine know, is updated only once every ten minutes. So you can't. Do quick trading, and this is where sort of the synergy with open transactions comes in. Open transactions lets you trade instantly, pretty much, and that's it's a it's it's great for off-chain transactions that need to be instant. So, um, you know, this this is why I'm working here. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. Uh, you mentioned that you would need the subgraph to mm -hmm. trace your transaction back to Genesis block. Mm -hmm. So if somebody issues a stock on, as a colored coin, mm -hmm. and as time passes by, mm -hmm. these colored coins are traded across different different addresses. Mm -hmm. The size of that subgraph 
becomes bigger and bigger as the mm -hmm. line goes on. Right, right. So at a point like maybe five years down the line, mm -hmm. is it possible that the subgraph becomes too big? Right, and right. So yeah, so uh, that's a that's an excellent point. Uh, if you are a thin client, what you can do is uh, I mean you really only care about your own address, right? And this is this is what other Bitcoin thin clients do is uh, you 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 use something called simplified payment verification. And you can you can ask the node that you know different nodes. Hey, can you get me all of the all of the uh, color coins that eventually lead only to this address? All the the rest of the graph I don't really care about. Um, so it's really even a subset of that larger graph. And you know it's possible it could be fairly substantial, but it shouldn't be for one, two, three addresses. So. I mean Bitcoin. Like uh, wallets like Electrum already handle this, so it's, it's not much more than that. Any other questions? Can you do demo, like quick demo, two uh, three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I have a stupid Chromebook Pixel, um, which doesn't let me pop up a GUI. So, um, and you need the GUI in order to do it. So I apologize. I tried. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you can you can download it uh, chromowallet.com I believe, and uh, uh, there's you know you can pull it straight from GitHub if you want. Uh, the project is called NGCCC Base, which is next generation color point client base. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. That's, any other questions? Yeah. How does the Defining of the colors mm -hmm. work like, for instance, I say I now issue a stock, mm -hmm. and if somebody else says he's issuing stock, mm -hmm. how right. do we know it's like a group of right. stocks or right? In in that way, it's a lot like altcoins. So you don't, you don't know what it represents, okay. um, and this is where sort of like uh, uh, stuff external to uh, Bitcoin comes in, where you can, uh, if you're a corporation, for example, and you really are issuing. You could, um, you know, PGP sign a prospectus before you do the, you know, issuing of stock, where you would say, okay, um, each share entitles you to 0.01% of the company, uh, you know, at, or these bonds are redeemable at this point, here's our profits for the last two years, you know, you, you could put all that information. It's stuff that normal companies do when they go out on the <coughs> public market, when they IPO. And these are things that we would expect people to do. But you could, if, if you're just, um, you know, creating a junk color that doesn't mean anything, then, you know, the market will treat it that way, right? And that's that's the beauty of it is that you're free to do it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that people will necessarily buy it, and it'll trade at the value that people think it is, which is the whole purpose of a, you know, capitalist open market system. I don't know if I understood correctly, but a oh. uh, question. Mm -hmm. Once colored mm -hmm. coin, mm -hmm. is it possible to change the color of? Um, well, you can, you can certainly uncolor it just by destroying the color. There are procedures to do that. And in fact, like if you don't transfer properly in a transaction, then it get, the color value just gets destroyed. And that's, that's sort of the default behavior. Um, at that point, you could potentially recolor the coin, but you know it wouldn't have the properties of both coins or anything like that. It would just—it's always just one coin. Yeah. So let's assume there is a renowned, you know, company. Mm -hmm. They have their coin, and mm -hmm. they call it Coin A. Mm -hmm. And I'm a scammer. I want to also issue some Coin A, so I call uh -huh. Coin A. Uh -huh. So will the other people uh, recognize because of this? Um, mm -hmm. Genesis these coins have that I'm not actually selling coin A, like the true coin A? Or yeah, yeah, you can always trace that. back the coin to its Genesis transaction, which is part of the security. And if you are a company that's actually issuing these coins, what you would do is have your prospectus on your website and make it clear, and PGP sign it, do, do whatever, and make it clear, okay, here is the color definition for our stock. Any other color definition is a scam, don't believe it. And that, that, that should suffice because once you import that color definition, there it is. Yeah. yeah. Is there any limit for uh, number or variations of colored uh, coins?
bitcoins? Um, the only limit is really like the number of bitcoins that are available. One million. Yeah, I mean, so there is no um, intent to to uh, standardize some or or some kind of classification. Uh, no, um, I, I think that's for third parties. Um, if you, you know, we, it sort of opens the market up for, um, you know, what you would call ratings agencies, you know, people that could classify different assets and sort of rate them based on their trustworthiness, based on, you know, what, whatever the prospectus might have said. It's like any other sort of stock market or open, um, you know, trading. You, you want, the reputation system we don't handle. And that's something that someone else can do. Yeah. The issuer is free to choose the, the underlying Bitcoin value mm -hmm. and then it can be split? Yeah, so you can, um, so it gets a little tricky just because there's a, there's a minimum amount of Satoshi that you have to transfer or else the pools won't you know, accept it as a transaction. That's like hard coded into it. And, it's been dropping. I think it was 54.30 before. I think the latest one is something like 1,000 now. But uh, so it gets a little tricky. So it's not exactly like Bitcoin to color coin is like exact ratio. Um, but yeah, there is a, some Bitcoin value that's also transferred whenever you're, you're doing color coin transfers. Yes. Do you plan to use other blockchains, Litecoin blockchain mm -hmm. or Filecoin blockchain? Well, so the interesting thing here is that um, you can issue a Litecoin color coin <laughs> and uh, and have somebody back it, and you could you you essentially have a altcoin to Bitcoin or any kind of altcoin to altcoin, any kind of uh, pair you can think of. You can exchange it straight with color coin. Uh, it would require an issuer that's willing to back it. And um, you know, it's you know, I can I can maybe even make a bot that does that. Um, but that, it, as far as actually implementing color coin on other blockchains, it's uh, it's blockchain agnostic as far as that's concerned. It's more related to the previous question, saying mm -hmm. is there any limits because mm -hmm. Bitcoin is twenty one million coins, and yeah. at some point, it might yeah, be very crowded. and it may get too expensive for like airline exactly. miles, for example. Um, so you could move to Dogecoin or whatever. Um, the reason why it's on Bit the Bitcoin network is that the network is the strongest one out there, and it's it's very hard to scan. So, um, you know, whereas like these smaller coins, you know, they don't have anywhere near the mining hash power. So, um, yeah, in the future, that's an entirely a possibility where you you can have like color coins issued on another blockchain, and you know, that's where the market is. You know, it could be like Nasdaq is Bitcoin and New York Stock Exchange is over here. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin nodes are color blind, right? Like yes. They, they don't know which coin is a colored coin. Mm -hmm. So how are transaction fees handled? So for example, if I have mm -hmm. uh, on my address just, uh, I don't know, 50,000 Satoshis corresponding to colored coins, and mm -hmm. I want to make a transaction mm -hmm. sending these colored coins to somebody else, mm -hmm. I need to pay a transaction fee to the Bitcoin miners who don't recognize this as a colored coin. Mm -hmm. So what what goes as a transaction fee there? Right, so the miners can know if they have the color definition, but if they don't have the color definition, it looks like a normal Bitcoin transaction to them. Mm -hmm. And that's that's part of the security as well. But um, as far as the fees, they're, they're calculated in the normal way based on transaction size and age of the coin, um, which tends to be younger for color coins, obviously. So um, there's, a, there's a very specific formula that's recommended um, that we use in, in the color coin wallet. Um, I believe it's something like, uh, like per kilobyte of transaction, you have to pay some number of Satoshi as, uh, yeah, but, as a transaction but, but, but fee. But the question then becomes that one colored coin, mm -hmm. the value of one colored coin can be different from the value of the Bitcoin mm -hmm. backing it. So, yes. so it's like if you have 0.10 is to my, 1 milli Bitcoin mm -hmm. corresponding to one colored coin, mm -hmm. and that represents a stock, mm -hmm. that stock is actually worth a thousand dollars, but the Bitcoin itself is 1 milli Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Now, when I'm transferring this thousand dollar stock to somebody, mm -hmm. If I need to pay a transaction fee, let's say one tenth of a milli bitcoin, mm -hmm. then the transaction fee is one tenth of a milli bitcoin. But in terms of colored coin, 
the transaction fee is paid in dollars. Yeah, the, the transaction fee is always paid in Bitcoin. Does that answer your question? So it's not paid in color coins. So when you do the transfer, it's always taken out of your Bitcoin pool, not your color coin pool. Okay, so each, each address that uses colored coins needs to have yeah, some certain uncolored bitcoins for to for the purpose of paying transaction fees and for other things actually. And so. it needs to be on, on the same address. You cannot. Well, it can be in the. It, it needs to be in the same wallet. It, it doesn't need to be in the same address. Yes. Uh, well, I actually didn't get. So the answer to one of the questions. I mean, so how is colored coins different from Ethereum and Mastercoin and all that? Well, and so sort of why why colored coin now those? Okay. So. Uh, Ethereum, Mastercoin, they all have their own currency. They have their own token. Um, and that's, you need that in order to get the benefits of, uh, of their chain. Um, color coins is strictly on top of Bitcoin. You don't need any other coin. Um, you just use that. Um, it's secured by the Bitcoin network. Um, and it doesn't need, it, it doesn't, have as many features, but I view that as a good thing because that means there's less stuff that can screw up. Um, obviously, the more complexity you introduce, the more security you have to think about. So, yeah. but, and the, the main difference is that it's, it's secured by Bitcoin, it's on top, and it doesn't require its own token. Any other questions? How much of the spectrum does this support? How about the infrared and the ultraviolet? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, every color ever. Okay. Okay, so maybe um, we can take a last question break here because we have another uh, presentation coming up. Okay. okay. Any more Did questions? You Did you have another question? Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just is there any way how to group? Certain kinds of mm -hmm. colors, like this is all precious metals mm -hmm. colors or right. you know, stocks. Right, right. Um, there's no particular way to do it in the wallet right now, but I, I imagine that's something that you know third parties like ratings agencies would do for you, and you know they would only put non-scammer color coins on there. So. All right. Any others? I think we need to move on. So, oh, okay. so Jimmy, Jimmy is here for you to, to, you know, to talk to and interact with, but we need to give just, just a chance to uh, do the rest of the slide. Okay. So while Justice is getting ready, uh, one thing I'd like to suggest is if, it would be nice if, if you could also do like, key signings at these parties or at these get together. So if you want to, uh, if you want to a GPG key signed, you know, feel free to talk to people and do this. I have, have GPG keys, and if you uh, are writing signs, so if you want to sign keys or have them signed, just talk to me. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.